is. So from our perspective, from talking about Basel, talking about the regulations, right, we are kind of focused or we are uh, we, we want to understand the probability of default, the loss given default and exposure at default uh, concept, right, and how is it that this EL can be computed. So before doing that, we need to develop these uh, develop these models, right. So let's basically before we before I go on, right. So let's try to understand, like, what is it that the dependent variables look like for each of these models, right? And how is it that these models would suit to credit card to the credit card product? Similarly, we'll do a similar approach for overdraft. We'll do a similar approach for mortgage. We'll do a similar for other retail, etc. So now coming back to the concept of a probability of default loss given default and exposure at default. And when I talk about that, I'll be talking about two things over here. Number one, the concepts in general, and then the relevance to credit cards. First of all, we're talking about probability of default. So what comes to mind when we talk about the probability of default right at the beginning? So, talking about the probability of default. So, what is PD or probability of default? So, it is the chances that a borrower is going to default. Now, when I say a borrower is going to default, right, I need to measure or mention the period of time over which he is going to default. So, that period over which his performance would be assessed is called a performance period. So basically what we say is that we need to merge the information for the next 12 months of the performance or the account's behavior, right? So probability of default has two values, right? And it's, a, it's kind of a dichotomous business problem that we are in over here, right? So basically what we want to find out is whether a borrower defaults in the next 12 months or they do not default. So basically, I'll I use the dichotomous flag which says, says y equals to 1. If the borrower defaults in the next 12 months, so over here it says that y equals to 1. If the borrower defaults in the next 12 months, So if the borrower defaults in next 12 months, Defaults in the next 12 months, right? So when I talk about the next 12 months, right? You see that when we're talking about this next 12 months, I'm bringing in the concept of a forward-looking model. I'm bringing in the concept of uh, uh, the performance in the next 12 months. So I'm bringing in the concept of uh, performance. I'm, I'm bringing in the concept of a forward-looking manner, right? So when I say that, okay, when I compute the probability y equals to one then this would be the next 12 months of performance, right? So y equals to 0, otherwise. Right, so the probability of default of a borrower is to estimate whether the borrower is going to default in the next 12 months. So how high are the likeliness of the borrower to default in the next 12 months? So that is what the probability of default talks about, right? So in ultimately, 
the objective you know uh, uh, the objective or as i call it the outcome of this will be the probability of y equals to 1 Over here, what we are trying to estimate is the probability of y equals to one. The probability that this variable. So, what are the what are the chances that this variable would default the next twelve months? And therefore, this y equals to one if borrower defaults in the next twelve months, right? So, this is precisely the the definite probability of default. Now, when you, when you look into this, this definition uh, appears to be very simplistic in nature that yes, I mean, it's very intuitive that okay, the borrower, who, who, what are the chances of the borrower to default? That's his probability of default. But the question, there are two questions which come in over here. One is your default definition. How is it that you define default in this case what is the default over here and the second is what is the performance okay <clears throat> so basically let's say i'm saying that uh, pd is the probability of a borrower to default right in the next 12 months so that's pretty intuitive now the question is that what do i mean by default what do i mean by default that's one and second is that when i talk about a performance uh, over the next 12 months how do i know that it is the next 12 months and not 18 months or 20 months or 25 months why only 12 months so this is the next so this is a big question that we need to answer right now generally when we develop business models the answer to this question differs you know so when i say that a borrower is defaulted so i need to define what i mean by default when do i say that a borrower defaults so when we are generally developing business models right this definition of default often differs from model to model because it's the most recent portfolio behavior that the borrower uses right and hence depending on the changes in the portfolio the bad rate definition changes the bad definition changes but when we are developing regulatory models especially the basel models right so basel absolutely clearly mentions the fact that hey if you have to use a Basel model, right? So if you have to develop a Basel BD model, the default definition must be 90 days past a few. So I would consider, uh, so if, if it's a retail portfolio, right? I would consider a borrower as a defaulter if he has defaulted or if he has not been paying back his dues or has not been paying his monthly uh, EMI is all monthly payment, whatever you call it, right? We are not paying his monthly payments for the last 90 days or more. So he has been delinquent for 90 days or more. So to define default, the first question that would come up to us is to define delinquency, right? Now, basis the delinquency buckets or the basis that the, the month he has been delinquent for right we can create an idea about the probability of so obviously so over here what we want to talk about is that what is delinquency then so delinquency leads to default right or, or a period of sustained delinquency will lead to default so what is this delinquency what is the concept of this delinquency <laughs> so a borrower is said to be 
a delinquent borrower if he misses out his payments if he misses out his payments on the different goods and services right so if he so i, I, I mean if he misses out his regular monthly payments so delinquency is if or missing out on monthly contractual payments miss out monthly okay so missing out on monthly contractual payments is delinquency so basically let's say every month i need to pay that minimum balance amount right within a certain date if i pay them with that minimum balance or something more than the minimum balance i am a non delinquent borrower so if i fail to make that minimum balance the payment then i become delinquent and if i fail paying this for some three four continuous months and i become delinquent for 90 days or more at a stretch then i'll be flagged as a bad borrower so this is where so if a borrower is more than 90 days past due then you actually flag him as a bad borrower he is 90 days past due or more right then if he is 90 days past due or more then his delinquent account will be or his delinquency would be uh, treated as a default right so for retail portfolios if a borrower is 90 days or more past due right in the next 12 months so that's a performance period that we generally look into so how is the performance period defined it is defined as a time period over which the performance of an account is monitored before deciding whether he would be a defaulter or not so so that uh so the bad definition over here is 90 days past due so this is what we call our default definition So this is or as we call it the basel default definition let's say i'm standing today right so today is the 8th of march and i want to know that how would a borrower be performing in the next 12 months and what are his chances of going default in the next 12 months so what would he do so, so basically what would I do? I will, I will look into, okay, this is an account which is there on my books as of, uh, as on today, right? And he has not defaulted as on date. That means he is active. If he is active today, it means that given that he is active today, in the next 12 months, he may or may not default, right? So he may or he may not default. So over here, what we would look into or what we would look to understand is the following. That what are his chances of going into default? So what are his chances of being 90 days or more in the next 12 months? So what is the period of next 12 months for us? So we'll start from April 2019 to March 2020. So that's the 12 months period. So when you look into the performance period, the next forward looking period, 12 months right so if i have a model which has been developed taking into account this next 12 months performance window then i the, my, my variables would always be forward looking right 
So standing today, using whatever variable information I have, in my model I just feed them, I'll get the probability of the borrower to default in the next 12 months. Right? So now the model on which I the model that I'll be developing, right? The data on which I would develop in the model would be historical data. So I cannot use today's data to develop the model. So I'll be using the historical data. And that historic and Basel has certain data requirements for developing the model. So I'll come to that when I talk about the data requirements and the modeling approach under Basel. So over here, what I'm just trying okay. to do is I'm just trying to explain the concept of the probability of default. Right? So over here, I'll say that a borrower is a bad borrower if he is 90 days past due. <clears throat> right? So if he has not paid at a stretch in three months, right? He is 90 days past. So he's a bad borrower. Now, this is the delinquency. So what is delinquency? Now, delinquency is measured or is reported in cycles, right? So what is, well, what are delinquency cycles? Let's say <coughs> that, let's say that there is a borrower who is not delinquent. So he is zero days past D, right? Now, if he is zero days past due, it means that he is a CD zero borrower. So, what is a CD zero borrower? CD stands for cycle of delinquency. So, this borrower is a borrower who has zero cycle of delinquency. So, he has not been delinquent. Right now, let's say there is a borrower who is, whose delinquency is ranging from one to twenty nine days. That's uh, CD1. So now, the next part that we have over here is now 30 to 59 days past D. So the next part that we have over here is is the 30 to 59 days bars due which is the CD2. Right? So like this, as we go ahead, you know, every, uh, so every, uh, within every 29 days uh, or 30 days, we have a cycle of delinquency. The borrower rolls over to the next cycle of delinquency. Like the 20, 1 to 29 days bars due, it is there in CD1. Then it on the 30th to 59th day, it rolls over to CD2, then it rolls over to CD3, and so on. So similarly, if you have a look into this, this becomes 60. So 89 days past due. Right, 60 to 89 days past me.
Okay. So when I talk about 90 to 190 base pass D, so the next part that comes out over here is CD4. Okay. So similarly, if you have also, so this is the bucket of delinquency that I was talking about. Right, so you have 9219 days past due. So, this the moment the account has been continuously delinquent for 90 days or more, right, it hits the CD4 bucket. The moment it hits the CD4 bucket, right, what you get to see is that yes, this is the part, or uh, so this is where the borrower becomes a defaulter, right. So, if a borrower hits, let's say, standing standing as on Jan 2016, right? I want to know whether a particular account in my books would default in the next 12 months or not. So, if the borrower in the next 12 months, that is between February 2016 to Jan 2017, if there has been at least one event where he has been one, you know, so where he has been 90 days plus due, you know that yes this is the part where this borrower has to be uh, or, or this is the point where the borrower is a defaulter the borrower is a defaulter in the next three months or if the borrower is a defaulter in the next 12 months right then we flag them and then, then i mean if the borrower is 90 days past due in the next 12 months then he is a defaulter Right. Our objective is to predict whether the borrower will default in the next 12 months or not. Right. So, in the historical data, when I'm developing the model, right, let's say I'm using data from Jan to, in, from Jan to, uh, to December 2018. Right. Jan 2016 to December 2018. So, from Jan, I use some months of information. Right. So, when I take the, uh, so, so, I need to create a default flag in the data, right? So, when I'm creating a default flag in the data, I create the default flag such that, so, who satisfy the condition of 90 DPD in the next 12 months, I'll flag them as 1, else I'll flag them as 0. So, I'll come to the data part a little later, right? So, over here, I'm just trying to explain the concept of a default. So when I say that the, for a probability of default model, y equals to 1 if the borrower defaults equal to 0 otherwise, then what is it that I am actually trying to say? Right? So what is it that I mean by this borrower defaults? So that is what we are trying to uh, assess over here. I am just trying to, under, you know, kind of give the definitions first, then we will go to the data part. Right? When we go to the data part, we will be talking about each of these aspects in detail. Okay, so Umesh is a question. So what if the borrower has not defaulted at all in the past? So if the borrower has not defaulted at all in the past, so he remains a non-delinquent borrower, right? Because in my, uh, so Umesh, just think about a bank's portfolio, right? So every borrower will not be defaulting, right? Now, if, if everyone defaults, then the entire portfolio is gone for a toss. So what will happen is 90 days past due, Right, 90 days past due is a characteristic which will be satisfied by some borrowers. So, standing today, right, or let's see if I have 3 million accounts in my in, in on my books, all the 3 million will not be defaulted. Some will default, some will not default. Some of them will be delinquent but not default, some of them will be non delinquent and non default. So, so there would be borrowers who, who has not defaulted at all, and that is what the banks want. Right, so we, we, we actually want borrowers who will never be going delinquent or who will never be defaulting at all. Right, so I, I mostly want borrowers who are in, in, in the zero DPDs. So those borrowers will be flagged as zero, that they are non defaulters, and the others will be flagged as defaulters. And then on that flag, we will develop the logistic regression model. Right. 
so we'll come to that part we'll come to that part over here i'm just trying to get to the get you to, to the idea of this uh, probability of default right so this is the part that is done now now oh, as you roll over to other higher cycles right so there are a, so this is the default right so this is the default bucket now after this there would be other buckets as well so let's say One twenty, one fifty nine, one sixty, not set to one forty. This is one fifty. One seventy-nine, and this is a very important bucket, which is your one eighty plus. Now, this one eighty plus, or the seventh cycle of delinquency, is your charge of bucket. So, this bucket that I have is. The charge of bucket. So this is my charge of bucket. So this is the bucket where, you know, if I roll over, I will be charged off from the books of the bank, right? And I will be put into collections. Right? So this is the point where the account actually is taken off the books of the bank and is put into collections. So that's so these are the respective cycles of delinquency, right? So these, so this is these are the parts. So this is the part which deals with collections, right? The next day when we come back, we'll talk about LGD and EAD for credit card. We'll talk about overdrafts, and then we'll talk about other products and see how PD LGD works out for them as well, right? And then once we have discussed this portfolio. Then we'll go to talk about the commercial portfolio, their PD, LGD, EAD concepts. We'll talk about downturn PD, average PD, and all. So we'll get these concepts first in place, and then we'll move to the data. Right. So next class we'll talk about LGD, EAD related to credit cards. Right. So thank you guys. Thank you for your time, and let's connect next Wednesday. Thank you.